With everything completed at the job site, there are a few final steps required in order to complete the commissioning of the system. The microinverters at the site are producing power and communicating with the ECU. It's now time for the installer to add this ECU to their EMA account for management, which may include future monitoring, maintenance, and troubleshooting. Installers must log in to the AP Systems EMA site at apsystemsema.com. As a reminder, if you don't have an account or are unfamiliar with how to navigate the EMA site, you must contact AP Systems to request a professional installer account and receive training. More on the EMA will be covered later in our detailed EMA video. However, this video will quickly take you through the steps to get the site active in the EMA. We encourage installers unfamiliar with this process to contact our technical support team for further training and also view the more detailed EMA video. Once logged in, installers will access the registration tab, which will conveniently walk you through the new customer registration process, which consists of five steps. First, the installer enters the customer's personal information, which includes their name, address, email, and other details, as well as a username and password assigned by the installer. The system owner will later use this username and password to access their system production information in the EMA portal, online, and on the mobile app. Next, the installer adds the ECU UID number from the recent installation by clicking the Add button on the ECU Info step. The installer then enters the 12-digit ECU UID which is the topmost barcode located on the back or bottom of the ECU, typically beginning with a 2. Take care when entering this number, as an incorrect ECU number entry will not enable communication with the site. Keep in mind that this is not the device IP address, but a unique serial number assigned by AP Systems to locate the device. Enter the time zone and click Next. In this next step, you can choose to import the inverter UID numbers you previously synced to the ECU or to enter them manually. To import them, click the Add button and use the Import from ECU tab, ensuring the correct ECU is chosen from the dropdown before clicking Insert ID to List. Keep in mind that this option will not be possible for sites that are not connected to the Internet. The UIDs then display on a temporary list for installer review. If everything is deemed accurate, the installer clicks Submit to finalize the list of UIDs. UIDs on the list can later be edited or replaced as needed. Click Next to go to Step 4, Group View, to configure the installation layout. Here you can elect to manually create a layout view or to have the system create a layout for you. Simply select the ECU from the drop-down, enter the parameters, such as the number of rows and columns, and click Create. Whether the system creates a layout for you, or you make one yourself, new rows and columns can be added and modules can be edited to reflect the layout of the array at the installation site. In this interface, you can drag and drop as well as right-click for more layout options. Once you're satisfied with the layout view and the microinverters are associated with the correct PV modules, hit Next to add a site layout drawing or image. Otherwise, hit Complete Registration to finalize the customer's system setup in the EMA. Once again, not all EMA use instructions are covered in this video. We highly encourage you to watch our detailed EMA video and read our EMA user guide for more information on EMA system use, including the finer details of new customer registration not covered here, such as the process for manual entry of inverter UIDs, how to add or replace inverters on existing sites, definitions of certain settings, parameters and available tick boxes, as well as site maintenance and troubleshooting options. There is a tremendous amount of functionality available to installers who utilize AP Systems robust EMA platform. As a general rule, if you're not sure what a particular setting or selection does, it's best to leave it alone until you understand its function. 
That way, installers do not inadvertently change site settings or configurations which may adversely affect inverter performance. If you have any questions about these process steps, please see our document library at apsystems.com or our extensive installation video library on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash apsystemssolar. If you can't find the answer to your questions in these available materials, contact AP Systems Technical Support Team at apsystems.com. Thank you for watching and good luck on your installation.